Hello everybody, so I am back again analyzing another junior cycle history sample question. Um, this one is kind of touching on the work of a historian um, and brings in a little bit of um, CBA uh, kind of analysis and reference to. All right, so here's our question. It says, this is a screenshot from the website of the Irish Association of Professional Historians. First things first, it's really important to read like the instructions and stuff up here um, and look at things like the sources written here because there can be answers to questions or there can be information there that can help you. So it says, when was the IAPH founded? And our answer is 2013. It says it right there, okay? And there's three marks for that. Um, and again, our answer is in the text. Our next one, what activity does the IAPH IAPH engage in. Um, so again, our answer is here. I've underlined it. I'm just not sure you can see it. Um, so it encourages research, debate and collegiality, supporting members with opportunities for developing enterprise and promoting their work. And there's three marks for that. What I'd say about this question is it's important to include everything that is stated here. OK, include everything. Um, question C, what is the difference between a historian and an archaeologist? So this is the first question um, where you have to use um, what you learned in history class. So it says historians study the past using written and unwritten sources. Um, so that's our explanation. OK, archaeologists study the past mainly by excavating. So that's a key word, digging up and it's been explained uh, material remains. And that's our explanation. So it says, list three things a historian must consider or look out for when studying a source. So we've listed our three things and I've numbered them to make sure that I have included all three because there's two marks going for each. So I've said bias. So this is a key word. And then I've explained it or defined it. So you have to check if a source is one sided. Um, then we have propaganda. So that's our key word. And then you have to look to see if this source only contains selective information. That's our definition. And then we have to look out for objectivity. So historians want their sources to be objective. So objectivity is our key word. So we want our sources to be objective, not influenced by personal thoughts or ideas. That's our explanation of objectivity then. Okay, so question E, we've 12 marks going for it. It is important that historians study a variety of different sources. Provide one example of each type of source below and one has been done for you as an example. This question and this one, you could get asked pretty much anywhere on the paper. Um, so we have our type of sources and then we have in our examples. So we have um, primary, diary, secondary, textbook, written, letter, visual, map, aural, podcast, oral, interview, tactile, coin. There's loads of different options that you could include here. Um, these are just uh, some that I have selected. So 12 marks for that and you get two marks for each um, one that you complete. Okay. Now question F. It says sources can have both strengths and limitations or weaknesses. Place each point in the box into the correct position on the table. OK, so with a question like this, you're just putting the information into the box that's been given. All right. So even if you are unsure, or you don't know the answer for definite, at least try. OK, put all the points somewhere. All right. And again, this is an important table to learn because you could be asked a similar question um, kind of anywhere on the exam. So we have our source, primary sources, our strengths is that it's first-hand information, our limitation is that it could be biased. And you will tend to find things like this, our limitations, they might apply to more than one um, kind of of these, all right? Secondary sources, our strengths is that a good secondary source should be based on primary and secondary sources. Our limitation is that um, they did not witness the events firsthand. So written sources, um, written sources, um, we have an example. So different newspapers can provide different viewpoints. A limitation of written sources is that they could be biased or used for propaganda. Visual sources, our strength is that it can show live action events. Our limitation is that it could be changed or edited or photoshopped for propaganda purposes. Aural sources, so they can recreate the music and songs of the time, but a limitation is that instruments may not sound the same. Oral sources, so you can ask the person questions. Our limitation is that memory might be faulty. Tactile sources, our strength is that, um, you know, you can see objects, they show objects made by people at the time, and our limitations is that they could be fake. 
Okay, so up next it says, you have acted as a historian while conducting research for your CBAs. Select either CBA 1 or CBA 2 and complete the questions that follow. And there's a tick box. So there's no actual marks going for this, um, but you still need to tick it. You still need to indicate which CBA you'll be talking about so the examiner knows, okay? Then it says, G, what was the subject of your CBA? So what was your CBA about? So don't just say something like local history. Don't just say something like family history. You need to tell me specifically what your CBA was about. And the example that I'm going to run through with you is the West Cork Railway. But obviously you'd put in whatever your CBA was about. And there's three marks there for just telling me what your CBA was about. All right, so question H says, list two sources you used while completing your CBA. So these need to be sources specific to your project. Don't just say I used a book or I used a website, okay? So the examples that I've given you, again, are specific to my CBA. So I've said Skibbereen Heritage Centre and I said that I interviewed my dad. All right, so our next question says, list three pieces of information you discovered while conducting your CBA. So this information should be specific to your CBA and should not be general statements or descriptions. Basically, you can't just say, I learned history is hard. I learned CBAs are boring. I learned I enjoyed reading. Okay, it needs to be information that you discovered while doing your CBA. All right. So on the 21st of July, 1887, the first train arrived from Cork to Skibbereen's new station. Uh, the next fact I gave is the line from Cork to Baltimore closed in 1961. And then the third one I gave was the Skull and Skibbereen light railway was called the tram. OK, so again, there are three specific facts, pieces of information that relate to my CBA on the West Cork Railway. All right. So they are specific to my project and you get three marks for each one. So our last question is, what did you learn about the work of a historian from conducting your CBA? You could see a question like this in relation to um, really any topic on the course. So, you know, from your study of junior cycle history, what did you learn about the work of a historian? OK, um, so the question might seem a little bit vague, but hopefully when we have a little look at it and we break it down, um, you'll kind of realize it's not that bad. Now, the junior cycle history exam, as we've mentioned before, there are no marks in the paper. So like you're not going to see the number nine here. You're not going to see that it's three marks for each valid point. So the best kind of guidance that I can give you is fill the writing space available. Um, in general, it's a good idea to include at least three points in an answer like this. So my first point is, I learned that while studying local history, it's important to visit local sites where possible. I visited the railway bridge next to the West Cork Hotel to better understand the construction of the railway. All right, so what makes this a good point is I have given a specific answer, okay? So I've made my point clearly at the start of my sentence about visiting local sites, okay? It's not vague, it's not wishy-washy, it's not I learned being a historian is easy or I learned being a historian is hard. Then I've reinforced that by giving a specific example of where I visited, okay? And then I have explained what I learned from visiting that site, all right? So again, it's really detailed. Detailed, it's really structured, it's not vague and wishy-washy. So my next point is, when I interviewed my dad, I learned that it was important to have my interview questions written down and to record the interview so I could listen back later. So again, this applies to my CBA. I've made my point about having my interview questions written down um, and I've made a point about how the interview should be recorded and I've explained why that matters so that I can listen back later. And then the last point I made to fill the writing space was I discovered that Google Books is really useful for finding, previewing and reading books online. This is where I found West Cork Railways, Birth, Beauty and Betrayal and Cork Abandon and South Coast Railway. So again, I've made my point about how I learned about Google Books. OK, I've explained why Google Books was helpful and useful to me. And then I've given specific examples from my CBA that I um, kind of discovered that I used with my CBA. CBA. All right. So for this answer, it was a total of nine marks, three points, um, or sorry, three marks for each um, kind of relevant point. And again, it's not vague. It's not wishy-washy. It applies to my CBA.